This is what it's like when doves cry. Fuck you. Just kidding, I love you. <laughs> Mrs. Sadie. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna do Gurg again. So I just wanna finish it. I just wanna get it over with. It's like killing me. It's so stupid and awful, but we're this far. I can't just stop now. And I have Mrs. Sadie up here. Oh no. A fucking cat. <laughs> She knew as soon as I was like, oh, she's here. Thank God. She's like, oh, no, I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to be your fucking emotional backboard right now, bitch. Okay, chapter 18 and 19. We'll do 18 and 19. Okay. There's some weird noises coming on and coming in from outside. Okay, chapter 18. So an incredible amount of things have happened, but, f <laughs> but first off, I want to talk about this girl, Rachel, a.k.a. Airman Norman. Of course, oh, stationed in Korea, he has to meet a girl. Because it wouldn't be Greg if he didn't have somebody to latch the motherfucker onto. I know what you're thinking. Oh, God, another one. You nailed it, Greg. And you're right. I'm pathetic. I bounce from woman to woman and move extremely fast with them. I get it. Do you really get it, though? Because I don't think you do. Really, I'm just another defective product of this ridiculous species. Just like you. No, I don't bounce around from woman to woman, Greg. Because <laughs> I don't date women. But I don't bounce around from guy to guy. I've never done that in my entire life. Um, mainly because I don't really uh, think I'm going to get married ever. So, number one. Number two, dating-wise, no. I never, I, I enjoy my singledom. I really like being single. Um, I can be by myself. I, I can be without a boyfriend and be fine. So, fuck you for making assumptions about your readers, you dick. Um, hmm. Ah, ah, ah. My point is there is no point in pretending I don't have basic human needs. Be realistic. Ew, it's so creepily parallel to, like, all of his videos where he's like, I'm just being honest. Be, live in reality. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Taking advice from like a near 30 year old man who does not go outside fucking ever. <sighs> God. Yeah. And basic human needs. Like, hmm. Um, I don't need a guy to do stuff every time I feel like doing stuff. It works fine. <sighs> so this girl, Rachel Norman. I call her booty. Huh? Ew! <sighs> if you saw her, you'd probably understand why. God damn. Oh, come on! Fucking fucker. God damn it, Greg. God fucking damn it. She came to our base only a few weeks ago, and we immediately connected. Yeah. Sure. As soon as she heard the fact, like, Yo, this guy stomped on his on Airman Martinez's leg and fucking broke his ankle. She's like, oh, I just got so wet. Oh, I'm sopping. I'm saturated with desire. She's not my race. <laughs> okay? <laughs> oh, my God. In fact, she's the first girl I've been with that has a different skin color than me. But, God... We literally wreck each other when we're alone. Listen, please, could somebody please tell me when you are stationed on a base, like, is there this, like, do recruits, like, fuck each other like this? Do they? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. I have nobody to talk to about that. So, I'm assuming she's black. And he calls her booty. I'm not, I'm not on board with this. She's fulfilled most every desire I've ever had. I'm so glad that we learned a lot about Rachel. Rachel Norman. 
She sounds great. Oh, wait a minute. He's just, I mean, she's just Greg's sex object right now. God damn. Feministism. Feministism. Uh, 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 uh. In, in addition to the more than pleasant physical side of our relationship, things have been mostly drama free. No. This is a welcomed alternative to the normal reoccurring sequences in my life. All the drama in your life is caused by you, Greg. <laughs> Don't fucking break other people over the coals just because you can't get a hold on anything in your fucking life. In general, I've been feeling a lot more at home here. He should never be there. Most people are desperate to get away from this base, but for me, it's practically paradise at this point. Sure. Man, this guy's emotions are all the fuck over the place. Holy Christ. They encourage my mentality here. They don't tell me to believe in made-up gods or eat a certain diet. They want me to be the bone breaker I was born to be. Okay. The way I'm treated, the way I feel, it's practically the polar opposite of what I had back home. Thank you so much for telling us that. That is so nice of you to tell us. Telling us all this stuff is just really, really making your story that much more engaging. This base has a far lower population density than I'm used to, which means less people for me to hate being around. It's generally far quieter, too. <sighs> On top of that, the person I sleep with is a few doors down from me and doesn't have a roommate. How insanely great is that? <sighs> How insanely great is it? Well, Greg, it's kind of unbelievable that things just seem to fall into place for you to a ridiculous motherfucking extent. You know... Like, a hint of realism in your book would be a welcome change, but so far, no luck. Now, as for my bunking situation, I don't have a roommate either. How convenient! Probably because no male military member is willing to sleep in the same room as me. I don't blame them. You would probably slit their throats in the middle of the night one night because you felt like it. And then blame him for having so much blood. After the training incident, my last roommate was already on orders to leave, and no one has replaced him since. There's not much to say about my job here. It's not like how it was back in Oklahoma. When I was in the States, I would occasionally be able to get in a patrol car and actually do police work. <laughs> yeah. Officer Gerg. Rank wasn't as important there. Here you could even drive a- you can't even drive a car unless you're a sergeant. Back in Oklahoma, I could literally act as a patrolman despite my low rank. Okay. In Korea, for the most part, I just stare at fences and try not to lose my mind more than I already have. Well, didn't you just say this is paradise for you? Now you're trying fo so fucking hard not to lose your goddamn mind while staring at fences? <laughs> Ice spray. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm armed with awesome weaponry on a daily basis, but obviously... Because South Korea and North Korea are not actively killing each other, these weapons are basically just an extra weight to carry. Boo fucking who? You may have noticed I'm not afraid to get in fights. I may have noticed that, man. I say that as a joke, of course. Oh my fuck. Oh, that was a really funny joke. Look how much I'm laughing at you. I uh, at, at you, not with you. I understand my position. Regardless, it's the same story on a different day. Recently, Senior Airman Austin, or Raven, as his friends call him, was hitting on Airman Norman alone in the briefing room. Watch Greg defend this girl's honor that we have no idea what she looks like or what she likes in life. We just know that her pussy game is real tight. <laughs> the fuck am I talking about? 
her booty game is real tight, too, because Greg calls her booty. I'm sure she fucking loves that, as a military woman. <sighs> when I walked in, he had a hand on her hip, and her back was against the wall, so she couldn't easily escape him. Airman Austin was sub subjecting my girlfriend to something painfully similar to what Ashley had gone through. Guys, remember when Ashley's hip was touched? I do, too. But Greg just had to remind us. He just had to. Because he needed a couple more words to just throw in your fucking face. <sighs> Remember that kid's arm I broke back in high school? Nope, I don't. Please refresh it. Well, what Airman Austin was doing to Airman Norman was even worse. What? How? Unfortunately, I was only an airman first class at this point and was already in hot water for what I did to Martinez. Yeah, hot, 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 lukewarm water for what you did. In a calm voice, I said, Airman Alston, that's my girlfriend. He turned around and smiled at me with his hand still groping her hip. That senior airman. Him demanding I address him by his full rank infuriated me more than I already was. Yeah. What he was doing combined with those three words executed in that tone made me want to stomp on his face till only smashed brains, torn flesh, and broken bones were left of it. You got some anger issues, pal. Like, that's an understatement. I maintained my composure despite him condescendingly reminding me of his rank and spoke in the direction of my girlfriend. Booty? Immediately, the senior airman busted up laughing and with his altered composure, his hand slipped off her hip. Airman Austin asked while laughing, Booty, that's what you call her? I smiled angrily. Like this. Like you're taking a shit. And replied, yeah, booty. You wouldn't know the half of it. As we spoke, booty walked past me and out the briefing room doors. She wasn't upset with me. She just wanted out of that situation. And you know this how? Because of your fucking mind reader prowess? You just know that's why she left? Maybe she got fucking embarrassed that you called her a private nickname, I would assume, um, to a guy in front of him. You're such a fucking asshole. Airman Austin said, in a jovial tune, you're a kick dude, but I'm going to bang your girlfriend anyway. I hate the way Greg treats women. I really fucking do. It's so sick. And he he puts on this air of that he's all like, oh, no, I get the troubles, and you're, you're all beautiful. Don't worry. But, like, you just introduce another character. You introduce another character as just a girl you fuck all the time. You don't like her for her mind. You don't like her for anything else that she brings to the fucking table. You just are like, oh, she's so hot. Oh. Penis and vagina time, y'all. Ew, I don't want to think about Greg's cum face. Oh, I just went dry as the Sahara. My mind was a war zone. I couldn't hold back my words any longer. I spoke in a low, gravelly tone. Like, what are you, fucking Batman all of a sudden? Ready? I'm going to do it in Batman voice. If you touch her again, I'll slit your throat. <laughs> Am and Austin's attitude changed completely. Yeah, alright. Empty fucking threat. Him being a few inches taller than me didn't help my position either. He replied in a more serious manner than before. Now I'm definitely going to bang your girlfriend. Only when I'm done, there won't be anything left of her. What, your dick has, like, vanishing powers? What the hell? I blacked out. I woke up in the hospital in a neck brace and had three broken fingers. My thumbs weren't broken, but one had a missing fingernail. Okay, I'm gonna just say this. It would have been nice if, um, all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden he's blacking out from rage, it seems like. 
obviously he beat the unholy Christ out of this guy. Now, I think it would have worked much better if he had blacked out during the fight with John, thus learning there is a rage component to him. But then, over time, he realizes, like, no, I like the fact that I just did that. So now he doesn't black out when he has all these anger issues. The fact that you're blacking out now when you've been proven to be very calculated in your anger doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Because if you're blacking out, you're blocking something out that you don't want to be a part of. He wanted to be a part of all this rage and all this hate. So... I don't believe that you blacked out. I just don't. You were conscious when you broke John's arm. You were conscious when you kicked your dad in the face. You were conscious when you broke Airman Martinez's uh, ankle. So, this doesn't this doesn't make sense. I like my way better. That would be that would be a good book to write. A better book. I don't fucking know. I would just say like <clears throat> you know, guy gets angry. He blacks out. Wakes up in the hospital. And, uh, realizes what he's done, but then, you know, then it becomes this, like, he becomes more calculated in his, uh, anger, and likes it, and just becomes more and more violent. So, I don't believe the blacking out thing works here. Would have worked much, much earlier in the book. Uh, it looked like someone half attempted to clean it off, but apparently failed miserably. You failed miserably at writing this book, right? With noticing the condition of my hands... I also quickly realized both of both my wrists were handcuffed to the bed I was in. Oh, thank God. I hope they I hope they like have him straight out and they like bound his feet fucking too and like have like a strap over his head. I could hear someone screaming in the background. You're not going to take him anywhere. We want killers at this base. Oh my god. No. Kill the enemy. Enemy, not your fellow airmen. You can't be trusted around a guy that just fucking willy-nilly beats up on his own fucking teammates. We want fighters. What's wrong with you? We're in the military, goddammit, not the goddamn Boy Scouts. I was pretty sure it was the LTCOL again. He always had the same slightly optimistic tone to his screaming, despite how angry he sometimes was. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we've we seen all that optimistic tone and how angry he was. Yeah, sure. There wasn't much talking after the squadron commander's rant. Shortly after things died down, LTCOL Hoss burst through the double door to my room to check on me, and I was and was clearly happy to see I was awake. Oh my god, now this guy has a fucking hard-on for Greg, too. Like a switchblade, I laid at attention in my bed. What? It sounds weird, but I couldn't stand, and I didn't want to disrespect him. At ease, troop, goddamn, the colonel yelled. God damn it, fucking cock. As LTCOL ha spoke to me, I began to realize I was gaining a high-ranking fan. He went on a pretty long speech, so I'll do my best to summarize it for you. Oh, thank you. He basically said there are a lot of cowards in the military. There are a lot of people who check in and check out like this is just a job. Um, that's what Greg wanted at the beginning of the last chapter. He's like, oh, I just want to be here and just get through everything. Many of them ruin their BDU bottoms, defecating in them, just thinking about the idea of ever taking part in real confrontation. Here's the thing, Airman Linfelt, you have quickly become a project of mine. You aren't a coward, and I don't think you're a psychopath. Okay, sure. This fucking lieutenant colonel needs to be ousted the fuck out of the military, too. I might have assumed you were had I not talked to Airman Norman, who I guess is your girlfriend. Ah! Why? Why? Why would he talk to the girlfriend about this shit? Like, I seriously am, like, so confused as to, like... Like, can you have a girlfriend when you're stationed overseas? I don't know. 
I don't get it. What the fucking cock am I fucking reading? I responded, yes, sir. LTCOL Haas continued, well, you know how to pick them. She was defending you way before I was. Once she explained why you did what you did, I've completely written it off. And so long as I'm here, no one can punish you for it. Oh, thank the fucking Lord for this guy. Just Greg's fucking, like, minion now who's working for him behind the scenes. My wrists moved slightly, making a clanging noise as the LTCOL spoke. Um, I'm pretty sure, Lieutenant Colonel, like, there's a step above him, and then there's a step above him, like, pretty sure that, uh, anybody else besides just this one fucking guy who sees the kind of shit that Greg's character does, they'd boot him out. But no. No. LTCOL. That's, his word is bond, my friends. Hearing the metal clashing reminded him I was still in cuffs, so he stood up and called in a sergeant to remove my handcuffs. <laughs> I could only assume by the fact that I was in cuffs in the first place... What? Did I... Wait. I could only assume by the fact that I was in cuffs in the first place that the senior airman was probably in worse shape than I was. Just like everyone I had ever fought with had been... My mom did teach me really well. This is all this book is. Just doing this over and over again. People do things for me. Yes, I like fighting. I have a hot girlfriend who I call Booty. Who hasn't said a single fucking word. But damn, she's hot. And we instantly connected. <sighs> the colonel, the call interrupted my thoughts. Well, want me to call in your girlfriend, Super Troop? in handcuffs? The fact my girlfriend was physically there made me excited. In the boner area. Yes, please, sir, I said. The LTCOL turned to walk away, so I quickly sat up and said, Sir! He stopped and looked over his shoulder where he could see I was saluting him. Here's my salute to you, fucker. The LTCOL laughed, saluted back, and quickly left. Before the colonel went and got my girlfriend, another person clearly approached him outside talking about me. I... Why he keeps calling her his girlfriend is so sick to me. She's your fuck buddy at this point. That's all she is. She's just a vagina to you. She... Her whole body is a, is a substitute for your hand at this point. Because we haven't seen anything connecting these two characters together other than sex. We don't know why he likes her. We don't know why she likes him. It's just, like, out of fucking nowhere. Like, build a goddamn, like, unless it's truly a fuck buddy situation. He screamed at them, no Article 15, no LOR, no therapy, no nothing. He's already cleared, no one touch him, you got me? A few voices screamed back, Yes, sir. I want to punch this colonel even more than fucking Greg at this point. After a few minutes of silence alone in the hospital bed, Booty ran in while excitedly saying, Oh my god, you psychopath. She sounded happy, but her dialogue was confusing. Psycho? Why? I asked. <gasps> Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Booty explained, after Austin threw you against one of the desks, you jumped on him and ripped out his eye with your bare hand. You are not Beatrix Kiddo from Kill Bill, Greg. Do you know the fucking tort? Like, do you know how insanely difficult it would be to rip out somebody's eye? You can't even imagine that. Like, you would have to fucking have... Like... <laughs> like the... Like... 
Like, the fact that he, like, Greg thinks you could just do that. And Booty's getting all excited about it, too. That's so sick. I sat there in shock. I felt sick. After a moment of silence, I asked, Is he... I mean, what's his condition now? Well, he doesn't have a fucking eye because of you, number one. Number two... This kid would be out of the military so goddamn fast it's making my head spin. Pew, pew, pew. I, I don't, I just can't, I just cannot suspend my disbelief anymore. Booty quickly said, well, apparently your freaking thumbnail is jammed into the side of his eye socket, so they're removing that in pieces. But salvaging his eye isn't happening. The amount of damage you did, God, Artie. Oh my God. Knowing the extent of damage I inflicted made me question the LTCOL not sending me to a padded cell somewhere. I'm right there with you. That's the first time in this book I've been right there with you. Why the fuck is this kid... Not in a padded cell somewhere. Booty explained. Artie, I told Hoss that Austin sexually assaulted me and you were just defending me. Okay. Okay. He touched her on inappropriately. I get that. I also get the feeling that this girl heightened some shit to save Greg because that is the only reason... Um, Greg, uh, would stay in the military at this point. I was confused. I replied, but he didn't. Booty shook her head and quickly corrected me. Actually, when anyone places their hands on another person in the way he did me, it's considered sexual assault. I mean, he groped me, Artie. Her saying that made me feel much more content. Oh, God, I'm sick to my stomach. There's too much Chipotle. It's going to come all back up onto Greg's face. <laughs> out of all the significant fights I had been in, a large portion of them were against people who had just sexually assaulted someone. So, the fact that you feel like you have to come to the defense of people that quickly says a lot about you, too. The one with Martinez was the result of my bloody nose, and my father, well, he shouldn't have choked me. I warned him. Fucking textbook abuser right there. You're making me do this. You're making me do this. No impulse control on this side. No being able to deal with fucking assholes of this world. No, I have to act out because you made me do this. It's a classic sign of abuser. Classic. Sick. Maybe I wasn't the psychopath people described me to be. Maybe LTCOL Hoss saw me for, exact, for who I really was. In his eyes, I'm exactly what the military needed. Maybe I am. Oh my god, no, Greg. No, Greg. Um, if everybody around you is calling you a psychopath after really horrible things you've done, chances are you're a fucking psychopath. The more you deny that you are a psychopath, you know, the maddest one of them all never thinks he's mad. I'm going to take a sip of soda. I haven't had soda in a very long time. Nor have I had Chipotle in a very long time. <laughs> Gross. Excuse me. All right, let us see how far... All right, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine pages left. we got to do chapter 19, and then we're on chapter 20. 73% of the way done. 73. Here we go, cowboys. Here we go. All right. Sorry. It's just, you know, you know how it is, guys. It sucks hard to read. You're making me do this! <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Um, yum, yum, yum. Alright. Chapter 19. 
It's been quite a few months since the incident with Senior Airman Austin. They could no longer use him for normal police duties due to him having inconsistent and defective coordination. No. Okay, he doesn't have an eye. <laughs> God! No fucking sympathy for the fact that you tore out somebody's eyeball inexplicitly. Inexplicitly tore out somebody's eyeball, sure. His depth perception was shot and his peripheral vision cut in half. Because you tore out his eyeball. Oh my god! Holy shit! Oh, Austin was likely going to sit behind a desk for the rest of his life. Or fucking kill you in your sleep for tearing out his eyeball. <laughs> I can't believe how blasé he's being about this shit either. Speaking of which, he now works at a desk inside the squadron managing the R.O.D. Rod Squad. <laughs> That's what I call my Friday nights. I asked our airman temporary relieved of duty who no one else wants to wants to deal with. Fuck you wants to deal with. Damn, this guy now, he's lived his whole life with two perfectly functional eyes. And now, and now they're gone. And now one of them's gone because of some psycho in the military. So fuck you wanting to deal with, shithead. I think Airman Austin could have used his situation to get a medical discharge. His situation. I just, it's so... Oh, I came from upstairs. I thought the door was... Someone's banging on the door. <gasps> so creepy how casually he explains all this shit. Like, I don't know. Unfortunately, I think he's like me in the sense he doesn't see much of a future for himself outside the military just yet. Um, how do you know this? Did you go and talk to him? Like, look, man, I'm real sorry I tore out your eyeball. Like, you know, things happen. We can't, we can't ever, you know, like, we'll be okay, though, right? Like, fuck you. Jesus Christ. I mean, I don't plan on staying in. I'm just not in a hurry to get out. Just after I got my neck brace off, LTCOL Haas signed me up for every other training event he could. I was flown all the way back to the States to get trained on various high-powered weapons to include the 50 Calibri... Machine gun. Is that how you spell caliber, like, overseas? Or is Greg just dumb? C-L-A... C-L-A... C-L... Oh my god. C-A-L-I-B-R-E. Calibre. I know caliber. I've never seen caliber spelled that way. 50 caliber machine gun, which has been known to literally rip people in two on impact. The amount of power they were giving someone with this significantly limited life experience I had was ridiculous. God damn it. But that's just what you get from volunteers. What does that mean? We were just a bunch of people who were young enough to say yes and weren't wise enough to say no. Ugh. Can you pick consistent emotions so I can understand where the hell your character is even coming from? I was also sent to SWAT training, where I learned all about how to empty out buildings. Oh, yay, hooray, empty buildings, derp -a derp -a derp oh. This project involved mostly army soldiers and barely any other airmen. Fucking special snowflake syndrome. During training, a middle-aged, high-ranking marine trained me on close quarters combat. He was far more skilled than I was, but in comparison to the rest of the class, I did very well. Like, jerk yourself off a little bit more, Greg. I don't think we have enough ejaculate all over our fucking faces. There was even a point where I was given the opportunity to... <laughs> to hurt the Marine like I did Martinez. But when I made the first of my normal sequence of moves, he dropped me instantly. Good. I hope he stomped on your dick. I hope he kicked your balls back up into it in your body. I hope he pulled each one of your arm hairs off with a tweezer. I hope he super glued his hand and slapped the shit out of you. And I hope that he took a dildo and slapped you across the face with it again. No, I just said slap across the face. I hope he took a broom, the bristly broom, and ran it across your feet as hard as you, as hard as you could. I love the feeling of trying to hurt someone and failing miserably. What? 
okay. It's exci it excited me. I had to learn all I could from that man. I wanted to become more capable with his guidance so I could defeat anyone as skilled as he was. Ding, 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 ding. The SWAT trainers, the Marine in particular, trained me incredibly well. Like, I would be more interested in learning what these training exercises entail. Not, I don't care how he feels about them. We know he's fucking psycho. We know that already. Like, what kind of training do you go through? I'm interested now. I, I have seen, like, SWAT exercises and stuff, like, when they, you know, on, like, Wild Boys and stuff, when they go to, and uh, learn how to do all that stuff, and, you know, they mess everything up, obviously, but it's funny to watch. Um, but, like, you know, he's just, he just wants to get right back into his own head again and how he feels about everything and, and, and uh, how people just bend over backwards for him. And, uh, that's, that's it. We don't get to learn anything else. Add, when you're writing, add your first draft. Throw the fucking, all these details in. Throw a shitload of details. Throw more details, even if you think they're insignificant. Throw them in. Get as much color to your story as you can. Because when you copy edit, you can take out all the needless fluff. You do a first draft without details, it's boring. I'm bored right now. I'm tired of this. Ugh. The SWAT trainers, the Marine in particular. Oh, I went in an amateur. I went in an amateur to close quarters combat and came out a professional. Fuck you. No, you didn't. It was incredibly fulfilling. During one of the many training events I was sent back to, I got a call from Booty back at the base. Get it? Booty call? Wait, th what? Two hours and 27 minutes left in book? No. That can't be. That is bullshit and you know it. Oh, it's, it's because I'm like stopping so much. That's what, that's my reading speed. Mm, I didn't have a phone on me, but she called the building the people... She called the building the people I was training with worked out of. Oh my god. And they connected us. Booty and I weren't heavy talkers. Uh, conveniently. So most of what she said involved her getting a new roommate. What? Initially it sounded like a bad thing considering it limited our more intense bedroom moments to just my room. Oh, <laughs> ah, dab, 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 dab. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> Where am I? Blah. But when I returned to base, I was subjected to literally the best case scenario. Walking down the hall towards Booty's... Oh, fuck. Walking down the hall towards Booty's room, I heard two girls laughing. Oh, what's gonna happen? The best case scenario for Greg, two girls on his tiny little uncut skinny penis bobbing up and down haphazardly. <laughs> oh crap. He's going to he's going to fuck them both now, isn't he? I was happy to hear my girlfriend was actually getting along with whoever was there. I set my bags in front of my door and kept walking towards her room. Booty had the bad habit of leaving the door open, so I didn't need to knock. When she saw me step in front of the door, she exploded with excitement. Gross. She ran up and jumped on me while screaming about the identity of her new roommate. Oh my god, I hate it. As I felt Booty's warm and br I'm gonna kill myself. How many times have I said Booty? I felt Booty's warm embrace and heard the roommate's name being spoken. You didn't even tell us what it is. Oh my god, I hate it. My eyes fixated on the, oh no, on the young, beautiful, blonde woman standing there. This girl stared back at me, you know, with a huge smile on her face. Tingles shot through my body as I held my girlfriend while looking at the new girl. 
It was Corey! <laughs> I should have seen that coming! Oh no! Oh, of course it was Corey! Of course it was Corey! Of course she came to South Korea! Of course she's Booty's fucking roommate! God damn it! <laughs> this is actually turning funny at how contrived everything is. Still holding my girlfriend, Corey walked up to us and hugged us both. Like, needlessly fucking intimate all of a sudden. My girlfriend, like, you don't even refer to her as her real name. What's her name? Rachel. You either call her Booty or my girlfriend. Are you kidding me? My girlfriend quickly said, Hey now, don't get too fresh, I just met you. Oh, are you bisexual all of a sudden now? Okay. I laughed and replied, don't worry, Corey's awesome. Over dinner at the base's only restaurant. <laughs> okay. Corey explained that she was given the opportunity to go straight from her deployment to my base in Korea once her time there was up. What? Okay. <laughs> South Korea is a base that often takes people away from their non-immediate families. Right. If you're lower ranking, the hours are so long, it can be difficult to stay in touch with most anyone back home. This fact made the base easy to get assigned to. In fact, people probably thought Corey was crazy to want to go straight from one deployment to another. No, we just had to make your book all about you and your your basic instincts. Regardless, Corey didn't seem remotely upset that I was with Booty. Why would she be? She wasn't your girlfriend anyway. Cover my face so you don't see this. Hmm. Uh, if anything, she encouraged it. Basically, Corey was being the amazing friend she always was. Uh, shut up. As we ate, my girlfriend asked, Have you and Artie ever dated? Ah! Keep bringing it back to, like, who Artie or James is dating at the time. God. Oh, my eye. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels good, good, good. I smirked at this question and Corey laughed. No, never. He's been the best friend I've ever had, though. I literally volunteered to come to this base because I missed him so much. Maybe if Corey was developed as a bit more of a character or, or more than just a, a, a vessel for which Greg can jerk himself off to. Oh, for fuck's sake. Booty saw how sincere Corey was and asked, Do you love him? Corey smiled and replied, Absolutely. Like, he doesn't get bothered that people are talking about him right in front of him and, like, not addressing him. Booty blushed hearing Corey confirm her love for me. In an admiring voice, Booty said, I guess that makes two of us. Fuck you! I spoke up saying, You guys are killing me. Booty laughed and replied, No, really, I've never had someone defend me like Artie has. By ripping out somebody's eyeball. When he cares about someone, he'll throw down for them no matter what. Oh my god, this is like J Greg Jerkfest 2015. Corey then asked about what exactly happened, and Booty explained what I did to the last guy that put his hands on her. Corey was stunned. She abruptly asked, Oh my god, are you talking about the guy with the eye patch? You did that, Arthur? I nodded in response and she continued, Fuck you, flip table. Run away, fast and furiously. That's the guy who was assigned to show me around the base and process my paperwork. <laughs> Nobody talks like that. I replied, well, watch out for him. He's a pervert, obviously. So you just fucking the ever-loving shit out of a girl for your own basic needs. 
you telling your your friend that you wanted you jerk off to her. You, um, oh, no, lest we forget that Greg, you know, uh, purposefully kissed Corey when she did not want to kiss him. Huh. Corey smiled and replied, I guess I don't have to watch out with you around. Oh my god. Can we stop stroking this kid's massive fucking ego? I looked at my still slightly damaged hands and said, no, you do. He's a bad guy, I know it. You're a bad guy. Before there was significant silence. What? Booty spoke up in an optimistic tone. How about this veggie burger, huh? Oh, my bad. You guys eat meat. Pause. Yes, that's right. I'm dating a vegan. Literally thought I'd never bother with a vegan. But love obviously has nothing to do with diet. Oh. I feel like I don't even need to make commentary anymore. This fucking speaks for itself. I can just keep making, like, noises. I mean, noises. My tummy made a noise. I can keep making eye contact with the camera and just, like, you guys see? 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 Even the hatred I have for my father and everything he stood for couldn't distract me from the fact that Booty is genuinely a good person who has been amazing to me from day one. She was amazing to you because she did this. That's it. That's as far as I go. It's not, but that's gross to do more. Uh, diets are essentially irrelevant in relationships so long as both people are healthy. Corey added, I barely eat meat at all, actually. Hearing the conversation go deeper into diets started to make me sick. I can only take hearing about topics that reminded me of my father for so long. I spoke up. Can we please just not talk about this? They both lost it in laughter. I mean, they both lost it with laughter. Like, what is wrong with these two girls? They're so dumb. Oh. Booty jabbed me in the shoulder. Shut up, a hater! And laughed again. She could see I was upset, but knew I would get over it. Yeah, the fuck right. As they talked constantly the rest of the meal, I mostly just sat there and angrily cut my steak into abnormally tiny pieces. What are you so angry about? Jesus Christ! Every swallow was a slap in my father's face. Good. That's the end of the chapter. Him being pissed off that somebody said something he doesn't like. God! Oh, God. I am terrified that this is how Greg actually feels. I really don't. I feel like this is so much more visceral than Stones to Abigail was. <coughs> At least in Stones to Abigail, he attempted to strive for levity sometimes. Greg's version of levity. This is just a constant stream of affirmations of everything we fucking know about this guy and that things people have been saying about him for years. It's psychotic. It is so fucking cotic. That was awful. Ugh. All right, it's 1.44. I am taking a shower, and then I am fucking falling the fuck asleep because tomorrow's my Friday, and I am going to do a whole lot of motherfucking nothing for the next two days. Oh, son. Oh, son. Dance, motherfucking dance. All right, fuck this. All right, I'm leaving. Okay. Okay. Goodbye, bitches. Bye. Bye.